Okay, uh, we'll go straight. Basically, I'm going to talk about my, my experience uh, working in the bioinformatics core facility in the Center for Genomic Innovation in Barcelona, about different deployments and use cases that are using a uh, semantic reality platform. Uh, well, basically it's this. There will be four, four different cases, and I will be very happy to, to discuss with you uh, the applications. No? So, for putting you into context, no, my environment, uh, there are different... Uh, yeah, Mike, 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 I need a mic. Ah, here, here, okay. I should not move. No? Uh, basically, in my environment, you have different facilities, laboratories, so people generate different kind of data. Here we have a, a PCR, some uh, cryptography, etc. But we also uh, have a lot of bioinformatics, and we, we do things that maybe most of you are not doing. No? So let's go to the actual cases. One of the different cases is a ProtoWiki. It's basically a kind of simple links. Maybe some of you already know. Links is a lab information management system. In the end, it's not so, such a, a, an issue as something that connected to, to instruments, but it's mostly used for handling the, the workflow. No? Uh, here, this will be an example. Oops, should not move. Here should be an example. Basically, we have the researchers that access the, the web interface. And then they, they ask, okay, I want this protein, these things, you can disease digest you, whatever. And then uh, once they submit simple form, the lab manager handles, uh, handles this, accepts or not, asks the user for a meeting if necessary. And after that, uh, the lab manager assigns these, uh, the things to do to the different operators. No? You have an explanation, create different experiments, and up to a certain point, everything is done and is communicated to the, to the, to the user. No? to the customer. So here, in the end, when you, it's a simple interface, uh, you know already how these things are created with semantic media wiki, you have a different request, so the people in the lab might be able to access the different, uh, the different things. Okay, this is the, the request that are still not approved by a manager, then we have the, the, the active requests that are being processed, etc. If no? you're interested in all these colors, this is basically use the bootstrap, the bootstrap uh, scheme. And this would be an example of a form input. So in the process of creating an experiment, so this you already know, typical semantic forms, so we put uh, the lab operators, put the different data to the process, or the different processes, etc. Also whether the, the, the process is being running or not. And one of the maybe the innovations we'd say at a certain point that we are using is that we, we make a modification in semantics. Uh, task extension, maybe some of you already know. I don't know if now it's still maintained or not. So we, we, we modified it to be adapted to, the, to this workflow. So depending on uh, which things are uh, switched, maybe this, this, this task is running or not, people, uh, the users, receive emails. No? One of the typical messages is, okay, you made the request, uh, the users check this, the operator check this, the manager as well, then one of the typical, hey, please, bring the, bring the samples maybe with this specific value. No? Uh, according to the status of the experiment, also uh, user get notifications, and if the user get fed up with all the messages, mail messages, they can also choose, okay, I don't want so many mail messages, I opt out, I simply want to see the final result. Uh, another thing that uh, we created more recently is a kind of a user satisfaction tracking. Yeah? A typical thing is that the users uh, they, 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 they ask for a request, an experiment, something to be done, and in the end, okay, they got it, they make, they make a publication, but you don't know whether they, they were finally satisfied or not. So normally, if they don't say anything, it's a good, it's a good signal because they, they are happy. But anyway, we try to implement this. We simply, once the request is closed, they automatically receive a mail, and they are rejected to a special page form. No? This, this actually, the, the answer is limited for a, for a, lo a little time, maybe at most two weeks. And also, we, we try to cure that they could not change it continuously. Yeah? So, it would be an outlook. Yeah? I try to maybe focus on the, the list of requests that actually answer, but I must admit that not many people answer, answer all these satisfaction things. So we try to improve these things, why it's not happening, maybe it could be because mail is not such a good system, people receive so, so, so much mail every day, but anyway, so you can have an idea, so the, 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 the lab people can say, okay, this, this guy did reply, I'm sure they're happy, and if it were uh, red, there were not many cases, as far as I know, will be that something wrong happened. So that's uh, also a good indication. No? 
Uh, also, other because we are working with it is a uh, good thing is that we, we can uh, a lot of operators can put documentation. They can also put the standard operation procedures, so means how how the experiments are done, which is other steps, etc. And also we can use this is the tuning. We can put different informal cues. No, this technology you see here, this picture, I will I will talk in a few minutes. Okay, another another example. It's a bioinformatics unit uh, unit wiki. It's actually the, the actual unit uh, I'm working that we use a semantic media key platform for task management. Basically, we, we handle, handle time, hours, etc. So we have a different kind of request, and we can see the status, whether uh, we have accepted this, uh, approved, no, etc., whether it was invoiced already, always these different colors, thanks to Bootstrap uh, SKIN, actually, Camera uh, SKIN. So uh, in this case, we simply put the, some details about the, the task, but okay, we did this, we did that, we did this kind of work. Sometimes we differentiate whether we do data analysis or programming or was sometimes devoted into uh, cluster computation. And then we can have a, uh, a view, everybody knows, in different formats, with different, different hours. And we can generate some uh, final, final summary of the hours involved. And also, maybe you can see from here some numbers about the cost that is involved. So, okay, this user is going to pay uh, so much money for this service and they can, we can have a, a detailed, uh, detailed summary of all the different hours involved. No? Okay, so maybe I'm being too fast, I don't know how much time, but every, everyone will be happy because they will be able to, to eat. I will explain another case. I already talked about laboratory management system and now we'll talk more about annotation. Here I'm going to explain you a kind of uh, content management system using uh, smart media wiki, using biological data. No? This is the, actually the project is Basidi. It's one of the researchers we have there, Manuel Vivian. And well, that is, eh? you can visit. And what we do is simply is a, is a typical uh, database. You will have information about different biological, biological issues. Here is a kind of a gene. We made a genome browser talk a bit more before, uh, later on. And here it's a bit, it's a bit complex for, for you having an idea in this, in this project, uh, having a, a central a MySQL database, we, we use, uh, we use uh, MediaWiki, using Semantic MediaWiki for processing part of the information that was directly from the users, from some kind of files that I'm going to explain to you later, and generating different visualizations with uh, basically P3, uh, also genome browser and using CoCV and Lucent for indexing. We'll talk to you a bit now. Uh, that's what I was commenting, the specific extensions. Uh, I use a lot of external data, thanks to you, uh, that I modified for being uh, more uh, fit to the kind of data we were doing. And also sometimes we also use uh, uh, directly media wiki accessing some, some files in the file system like PDB structures that are some representation of uh, 3D structures of some molecules. Okay, one of the creations for this project is basically uh, 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 an interface for using a kind of a different spreadsheet data using that, uh, that uh, JavaScript uh, library. It's very nice, hands-on table. So users could be able to paste in, the, in the, this simple uh, spreadsheet some, uh, some of their data about the different issues, for instance, the different engine, and automatically then you could generate all this semantic data wiki information behind it. No? Over here, for instance, this is a, it is a representation of the, of the numbers you, you saw before, eh? put into a graph using actually Rickshaw, that is a D3.js library that maybe you already know. Is, is extensions, nothing like import. It's, it's far from being a, a production extension, so as, as a reference. Uh, another, another kind of innovation to say is trying to use uh, CoachDB, and uh, maybe some of you know, CoachDB is a NoSQL document database management system. We use this for getting some of the data we already had there, and um, we try to index it with, uh, with Lucent. And this we use it basically for making search, full text search, let's say about descriptions of genes, or this uh, faster, no? and also about coordinates. 
of course, uh, me is in the future I might consider to, to port it to Elasticsearch that as you know it's maybe is one of the most supported platforms now in media wiki for searching. No? But at that time I still I was more familiar with the other, the other platform, but it's something I might no? So here it's very you might not be able to see it's a kind of search uh, um, using this, uh, this, this technology, you search and put the coordinates down there, chromosome two, from that position to that position automatically, below you get a list of the involved genes and a representation in the genome browser. So quite in a live way. Uh, the same thing for full text search. Eh? Here we see, for instance, for cancer, automatically you search very fast. I cannot show you now because it will take much time, but it's really fast. Um, I'm going to the last part, I'm going to the genome annotation. From, from the experience on that project, we tried to think in our lab, how could we do a kind of a more um, product-like or kind of a, a basic framework that can be used in different projects that with the same needs. No? And this would be in the name of wiki, maybe it's not the most fortunate name, maybe we should change, but anyway. So the idea is that people might be able, through using forms, to change annotation, to change sequence information, etc. And we would be working with uh, typical bioinformatics uh, uh, formats. I know that most of you don't know them, but in the end, they are simple raw text files that include information. And people might be able to put them there, load them through a form. In the future, we might consider other ways to, to put that data because we might be able, we might be talking about huge data. And just loading, no? Here, we have a, maybe, a view of what is this kind of data. So you have typical text file, sequence information, and with description of the actual, the actual sequence. No? Here is another case, a GFP file, a format that also is also a text file that also includes some uh, jerarchical information. For instance, here it says that it has a parent that is the one below. Mm -hmm. So this information we will be able, we want to actually to reflect into the into the video. Um, this what we are working. You saw before some slides is uh, trying to integrate all this information, this location information, into browser. No? For this, we try to integrate genome browser, like this case, JBrowse, is one of the browsers we most of the community, uh, bioinformatics community, use the most. Uh, it, it can also get information from uh, Sparkle endpoints, etc. So we yes, as a big investigating, which is the most proper way to, to communicate with this. No? Uh, here you have a, maybe you have a, a little, a little V of V of this, you have the typical information of the gene, some related to children of this, this, this object, and here a view. No? And what I told you before that maybe could be interesting for you for other projects is trying to keep this jerky. Uh, we try to link different different objects, different pages by using specific properties. In order and in order to list all them, we use this extension. It's, and multi major parent, maybe it's not the most fortunate as well, but it helps that automatically you can get all the list of, let's say, all the children, all the parents, ancestors, descendants, maybe of one, of one page, uh, and at different levels, so in a very, very fast way. So it's something that using typical inline queries would be quite problematic. So here, for instance, you have, you have an example. I think that this might be, I don't know, a gene. So it says, okay, a gene, uh, has as a parent, has a dependency, a scaffold, and the children will have a different exit. Yeah? So it, it automatically shows it to you. And that's all. I don't know what's time, but I think it's, that's enough. Here's all the people involved from the Center for Genomics Regulation, from the Bicor Wiki, from the Wiki, Basiliano Wiki. And of course, we are very grateful to all the open source community, both Semantic Media Wiki and all the world. And any questions? You mentioned about this uh, semantic data import. And I, is it? Have you released something? It's. It's. You can. You can check the code. It's. It's public. It's, but it's not the final product we need. So, but you can. You can. You can see. It will be interesting to hear your contrast yeah. with the, what I. Yeah, perfect. Uh, I'm happy. I'm let's talk more. If you, I think if you check semantic data import, you, you might be able to find it.
you know, having a final release of an extension is it, always needs a lot of more care than maybe I'm not so good at that. But I will try. Any other questions? Oh, oops, oops, oops. If I understood correctly, there in some of your projects there's a high, um, um, so there's some part that is uh, inserted manually by, by uh, laboratory people, mm -hmm. and there is a lot of um, a big part that is inserted um, automatically using bots or import scripts and so on. Yeah. So I am wondering. Um, what if, if conflicts arise there? So, for example, you have um, you do an import of some information, then you have users that change some information, uh, clean it, refine it, change it, and then you do another import because there is a bigger data set, for example, and then uh, it might override all the, um, the refinements. Good point. Um, well, I, I talk about many different projects, let's say four, maybe you are focusing more on the last one, that is the one maybe we are developing for having something more generic. Uh, the truth is something that the idea is from the, we start from some uh, uh, some starting data, we could say, the faster GFA files, these text files, we import it there, and then we assume that users might change that. But you are right, there might be kind of a conflict if people might want to input other data. That's something we still have not seen how to build this. Whether we should allow people, okay, you imported it once, that's all. <laughs> or we should find ways to resolve it. We, we have not uh, entered into that. Point. Uh, I have two questions. First, um, wh which species genomes are you handling? Oh, okay. Uh, for all the different projects, let's say um, for VASDB, that is something that are publishing now. Uh, we are handling now human. You know, for, for the, the species, you have different assemblies. So we have human. We have two assemblies. We have uh, the mouse, two assemblies as well, and then a chicken. And in the future, we're going to add a few more. For the other project, kind of wiki, that more or less similar technologies, we are we are working as kind of a prototype with a British guy that is working with flies, with uh, apart from Drosophila, with little flies that have, uh, have inter ecological interest, and also with uh, forensics and all. This. <laughs> Um, and uh, you may have covered this already, but are, are any of these wikis also being used and edited outside your lab? Or are they all up for internal? For the, for the first one, well, for the Protein Wiki, actually you have edition from users. So users that make requests, okay, I want this uh, service, that, 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 so this would be a case. So users need the registration. For this, we are using, if I'm not wrong, a modified confirm account extension. Yeah, maybe some of you know. And um, for the other ones, it's not the case. So it's simply people either from the lab or the team. So, yeah. Good. So, uh, 